we want that we're though? Co- but y'all not coming with the man. So well, again, so but we're why trying does to, it matter? No, no, no. <laughs> you're right. You're, you're right. But what I'm saying is, we're trying to combat that. So if you're saying Bruce Lawn. One of the most polarizing conversations today is the idea of women in ministry. We've talked about it on the channel. I've interviewed some women in ministry. And today we have a woman that is in ministry, Brenda Palmer. Yo, we okay. are here. So women in ministry, what is your take? Women in ministry. I I have a lot of thoughts on okay. that. Because one, I think that we think ministry is only what we do in church. Okay. And I think ministry uh, is everyday life. Okay. And so I think we all, men and women, got the same commandment. It says, go ye into the world. Make disciples. Make disciples. Okay. Tell the good news. Yep. Um, and so I feel like when I think about myself in ministry, I think that's what I do. I think it, it starts to get muddy when mm-hmm. we talk about women pastors okay. and women leading the church. Mm-hmm. And I, I have I literally was just having this conversation because I was talking about how I physically feel after I preach. Okay. Like it is it is one of the most weirdest things I've ever encountered. Yeah. It's like the adrenaline mm. and the coming down from that. Oh, yeah. And I literally had the thought. I was like, I wonder, is this why people say like women shouldn't do this? Because I don't know if my body was physically built to handle the aftermath wow. of it. And so hold on, hold on. We're not going to gloss over that. <laughs> So when you preach, no, like you feel like the, the, the I feel the, completely depleted. Like it, it is such an, and I don't know if everybody that preaches has the same experience. I have friends who are women who preach who have had similar spaces. Uh-huh. Um, but it is such a, like it, it takes a lot out of you. And I okay, so and and, and so your conclusion was that I had I, a question. Okay. Wasn't a conclusion. Gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Okay, I good. questioned, like, I wonder if this is connected to why people. I know this isn't the driving conversation, sure, 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 but sure. I wonder in some spaces. I'm like, dang, were we built for this? Wow. Was my female body yeah. built for this underwear? I know I wasn't built for it as wow. a single woman. Wow. I, that is one of the things that highlighted like the importance of a covering for me. Wow. I was like, ooh, yeah, I can do this by myself sure. for a long time. Sure. Um, and I so, would have never thought in a million years this conversation would go this way. I just want you to know that. that wow. So, only because it's a very fresh one. Yeah. I literally was just having this conversation like, wow, I could. And then I even said like, yeah, I don't. This is for me. I'm not saying if it's right or wrong biblically. Sure. But I'm saying like I couldn't imagine pastoring a church Yeah. as a woman yep. preaching every week. Yep. When I first started preaching, mm-hmm. I started preaching three services. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. A 9, 11, and a 5 p.m. Whew. It is taxing. Oh, yeah. And then have to run the church yep. throughout the week yep. and counsel people. Yep. And yep. as a, it's one, as of the, a, it's one of the hardest jobs ever. I, and I don't know if I was yeah. created for that. Yep. Yep. And I I would have to say, like, my womanhood plays a role in my thinking now. Yeah. Yeah. Because I've experienced some, it's like a lot. Yeah. And it takes me three days to recover. So I had the thought, like, dang, I wonder if it was, con- like, if it's connected to this, like, mm. are there some things that we just are not made to do? I yeah. know all the feminists are going to probably shoot me for Yeah, this. oh, you get in trouble for I this. Will, this is great. I'm, but gl- I'm, I'm so glad you're saying all this, and it's not me. This is the <laughs> ultimate out, yo. I said, ooh, they're going to drag me. Yeah, but again, these are my own. I'm sure. very, very new to preaching. Mm-hmm. I'm not a pastor because... I don't know if that's my dominant grace. Okay. Um, I was on track to be a pastor. I took yeah. theology classes. Okay. I was, and then right when I was going to be consecrated as a pastor, yeah. I, God moved me. I transitioned churches. Got you. And so, not saying that it will never happen for me. It's just not. I don't really need that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Wow. Okay. So here is my take, and I'd love to hear your thoughts. Okay. On it. I think some of this is a semantics game. Mm-hmm. Because, and this is when the Calvinists and the Reformed people they're going to oh, hate. Yeah. Me. They're going to hate they me will. for this. <laughs> I think. When they see the word pastor, they think elder overseer, as Mm -hmm. per the requirements of uh, 1 Timothy 3, Titus, Mm -hmm. right? So they use that word interchangeably. Mm -hmm. And so when someone says, I'm a woman and I was on track to be a pastor, Mm -hmm. they think, oh, she's talking about overseer elder of a church, a Mm -hmm. lead pastor, a church Mm -hmm. planter pastor, right? Yeah, yeah. And that word pastor, I believe, is only used once in the New Testament. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And it's usually, it's actually the word shepherd in the, in the Greek. Mm-hmm. And so a pastor shepherd, from what I've looked at, is not the same as what an elder, the requirements of an elder, sure. or the requirements for uh, um, in Titus and for Timothy 3. Now, we do see female deacons mm-hmm. in the church. And so 
I personally don't have a problem with women preaching, teaching, leading worship, not just mm-hmm. children's ministry. I don't have a problem with it. I do, this is where I'm going to get in trouble, mm-hmm. have a problem with the WNBA and pretending like it's the equivalent of the NBA. Ooh. Okay. True. So if we going to pretend like that is the same, it's not. Now, when a woman could preach, I'm... Come on, Jackie Hill Perry, right? We have a women's pastor at our church, Julie Shepherd. Uh, there's a lot of women that can preach. Yeah, yeah. And then there's like the we're we're gonna say this is good, but it's not really good, or it's not really theologically sound. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah. And so it becomes this like quota to meet to say like for sure. Look, we sure. want to empower women. It's like, but are for they? Sure. But are they good? For sure. Is she sound theologically, and can she actually can she hold a conversation? In a, in a position where she can teach for sure in a what a covering to men to men and I would say oftentimes oftentimes I don't see that mm-hmm. right I think and so it's this interesting tension that we live in where like we want to empower women but sometimes we just we just are pre- meeting a quota yeah we're meeting a quota and then we're calling the WNBA the same as the NBA and wondering why they're not getting treated and getting the same fame and the same accolades well because LeBron could dunk a basketball mm-hmm. you know what I mean and there are some women that can dunk a basketball yeah, preaching yeah. preaching wise. And those women have massive ministries and massive yeah, yeah. platforms and they're preaching a passion and they're incredible communicators. But I think sometimes we just do this 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 quota thing and I, I don't think that's helpful to the women or to the the, the, yeah, the, the, yeah. Te- the the teaching thing. And so it's like, I live in this interesting tension with, with this topic and I'm always like too egalitarian for like the hardcore yeah, complementarian yeah. folks, but I'm too complementarian for the hardcore egalitarian folks. And I'm like, no, 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 no. Like we see women ministering in scripture. Mm-hmm. That's good. For sure. We don't see women planting churches in scripture that may be reserved for a man but that doesn't mean that you can't have women operating in their gifts but do we just not see it in scripture because culturally that wasn't it's a, a thing it's a fair question like yeah it's a fair question women weren't even reading books <laughs> you know what i'm question. saying so yeah. how are they gonna plant a church you know what i'm saying they weren't given access to the things that we have access to now yeah and so i think we have to we can't read the bible and not read it with like the cultural context sure. of what was happening in that time sure, sure. i just think like if it's for you, it's for you. If it's yeah. not, it's not. Would you say that a woman being a church planter and a head pastor is something that you think is within the design of God? Like a like a lead church planter woman? I'm going to say I don't know. Fair enough. Fair enough. Yeah. That's a great That's a great answer. I, I know, because yeah. I don't have a problem saying that. Yeah. I don't know. I, w- I would say for me, mm-hmm. no. Okay. Like I could... I, from just my that's, ex- that's a very politically correct <laughs> answer rather <by the> <laughs> i don't know but for me i don't know, I don't know. but for me that's no good. i would i wouldn't unless i felt like god called me to do that yeah yeah, yeah. you know what i'm saying because yeah. it's it's rough yeah i've yeah. i've literally been in church ministry since i was 15 yeah. i seen my dad do yeah. it you yeah. know what i'm saying yeah. like on the lowest level yes. it's just like there are some things i just would rather do and if i could preach the gospel without all of that mm-hmm. i'm really good well again it goes back to what you were saying earlier which is like you got to put together a ted talk basically like a ted talk that's also theologically sound yes Every week, and then and manage the people, and manage the a people, staff and a staff. It's just for me. It's just I don't want that responsibility. There are people who do that. Okay, there are people who are called to do that. I guess my question would be: Why do we feel like a woman couldn't do that? Is it that we feel like she doesn't have the authority to do that? Mm-hmm. Is it that we feel like she's good to preach mm-hmm. but not good to shepherd us? Mm-hmm. Or I guess I would like to know the logic behind yeah. that because I know I yeah. hear that all the time. Yeah. But why? Hey, you want to see something kind of crazy? Over 75% of the people that watch this channel are not subscribed. Please consider subscribing and turning your bell notification on so that you don't miss anything we have going here. That's a great question. So I think there's there's a couple of reasons why. One, I would say pragmatically when family creation, Mm -hmm. right? And you have the most vulnerable part of family creation is the creation of babies, Mm -hmm. which is taxing on the woman. And they also need a season to to bond and all that kind of stuff. Mm-hmm. So I think practically, like, if men and women were on the same trajectory in ministry, I don't think that would be beneficial or serve well women in general, right? So I think there's that season of life, which is which is hard. And then I would say, secondly, when you when it says to teach and hold authority over a man, right? That verse, I think that's in I want to say First Timothy three. Like, w- what does that mean, right? Like, what does it mean to hold authority over a man and in what context is he talking about i don't think that's a cultural thing i do think that men receive 
instruction better from other men. And I think that that can be hard. Now, that doesn't mean that there's not, again, exceptions to the rule. Uh, we have a woman's pr- pastor at our church. Mm-hmm. She's like a second mom to me, mm-hmm. right? So, and she's, when I was transitioning from off staff, like she definitely was there for me, helped me uh, process things and all these types of things. But it would, even in that, and, and she's like, I think she's in her 50s or 60s or mm-hmm. something like that. But even that was was different than the type of authority like a pastor would have over a man. So I think there's that component is that there's a there's a layer of like, yeah, authority and uh, authority over a man, like teaching and authority over a man, I think is difficult. I know, but it's just that kind, it just makes me, it's one of those things that makes me go, hmm, because majority of the demographic in uh-huh. churches are women. That's a fact. So, but do we want that though? Who, but y'all not coming with the man. So well, again, so but we're why trying to, does it matter? No, no, no. You're right. You're, you're right. But what I'm saying is, we're trying to combat that. So if you're saying, "Hey, most folks that go to church are women," and I would be like, "Yeah," but what I get is pastors saying, "How do we reach the men?" And so I go by not having women preach every Sunday. That's how you reach the men by but, having competent masculine men preach to men and lead. That's how you reach the men. But it's it's not working right now. We it's, still we, it's still no, no, predominantly but, women. So it how is. can we say like, well, you really is it like you really not gonna reach him if it's a woman? Yeah, up here? like I'm I'm so serious. Like you, my 17 year old nephew is not gonna hear a Sunday morning message from a 30 year old single woman and be like, yes and amen. Like it's it's not gonna hit him the same. Remember, he's he's seeing Andrew Tate on TikTok. He's seeing right, like he's he's influenced by mask like hyper masculine men mm-hmm. and so to go and hear this the, a talk from women it's just not gonna it's not it's not gonna hit them and i'm not i and, don't there could be an anomaly i would say yeah. i would be an anomaly to that well maybe you are yeah and be, i would well, say i would say jackie hill perry's an yeah, anomaly yeah, to yeah. That, i'm like right? because and that the crazy thing is the things that you're saying used to be my fears okay um because the church i started preaching at uh-huh. was a predominantly white church uh-huh. like older white men uh-huh. And I remember the very first Sunday, I was like, these white men going to get up and start walking out. <laughs> I was like, the moment I get up there, they're going to be like, all right, yeah. I got to head out. Yeah. And it was completely not that experience, yeah. which was shocking to me. Yeah. So I think I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I, but here's the thing. I think if you are graced for it, mm-hmm. you can you can hit mm-hmm. the people that you're supposed to hit. If you, I think we got to stop putting God in a box because mm-hmm. I think we can do that. Yeah. I think it is our own preferences. And I think it's OK to have preferences. Yeah. But I don't think we should make preferences low. Law, so sure. much to say like okay if you do it this way it's not gonna work and it's wrong because it doesn't match my preference yeah it's, it's totally right yeah. so it's like i i hear what you're saying because yeah. i'm like i don't know if it's right or wrong but i feel like if child a woman wants to go plant a church god bless her yeah and i don't i think if people attend her church it's yeah. countering what what people are saying is wrong because yeah. people are getting saved they are meeting jesus yes. and i think sometimes we can get caught up in like these little arguments that don't really matter to the fact. I think both sides are genuinely trying to be truthful and honoring to scripture. And I think that both sides are reading it and going, okay, this seems like a woman can't hold authority over a man in a spiritual sense, right? And and what, what does that practically mean? And then the other side is saying, yeah, but look at all these other examples of women in ministry. Yeah. I think both sides are attempting to approach this with scripture. I, I pointed to Pastor Mike Winger, who holds a similar position. I mean, he did mm-hmm. he did like a gajillion hour series on women in ministry egalitarian mm-hmm. versus well, complementarian view and it was very exhaustive and he, i mean he pretty much lands where i land which is like i think women could do anything in ministry with the caveat that i personally wouldn't attend a church of that a, was a, of a le- woman. yeah i wouldn't mm-hmm. do that or a uh, elder you know woman church I, I personally wouldn't do that and my my basis for that would be yeah i think that scripture in first timothy is clear but i also think pragmatically I think you need men to reach men. And if we're looking at it, me and you are agreeing, you know, there's a crisis of men not going to church. Mm-hmm. I don't think the answer is like, and let's platform more women to reach men. I just think that's a very yeah, illogical yeah. statement. And I think, and, and, and the men, men are going to, men are going to be like, well, where are the men? And I'm going to be like, right here, mm-hmm. like, let's go. Like, mm-hmm. and I don't want to hear no complaining about the, 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 the feminism or what. I don't want to hear yeah. none of that. You get to be competent. You get to be a leader. You get to mm-hmm. man up. And I get in trouble to telling men that too. You know what I mean? Yeah. So like we're in this interesting in between. But I, I would I would say both sides are genuinely trying to honor the scriptures. Yeah, no. And I, I feel that I think too, I think like, because then you'll have like the side of the women is like mm-hmm. you'll have a male pastor, but mm-hmm. then women are holding down leadership all across yeah. the rest of the church. Yeah. 
So then it's like, I'm good enough to do this down here, yeah. but I'm not good enough to do this up here. Yeah. And, so, and, and by the way, again, I'm not saying that a woman preaching on a Sunday morning is out. For sure, for sure. That's not what I'm saying. No, no, no. I, I think I hear you saying like okay. if if she is the lead the pastor yeah. of the church. I would say, I would say I can't reconcile that with scripture. However, I'm not if you were to plant a church, I wouldn't be like, yo. You're a heretic. <laughs> yeah, yeah, We're yeah. not friends no more. Yeah, yeah. That's it. I'm cutting. I would never, I wouldn't do, I wouldn't divide over that. Mm -hmm. But like I would divide over like someone saying like Jesus isn't God. Like I don't mm -hmm. think it's an essential, but I do think it's an important distinction in, in terms of why people view these things that way. And that's, that's what, that, that would be like the line for me it would be mm -hmm. like, yeah, nah. And I couldn't see myself being at a church like that. Now, churches where there's a woman that preaches occasionally, cool. You mm -hmm. know, it's, especially if it's great. I'm all for great yeah, yeah. teaching. I don't care who the source is. Ruslan, what about first chapter of the passage when Paul says, as it is within all congregations of the sense, women should remain silent. Doesn't sound like it's cultural mandate uh, to me. All equals all. Okay, what is that? First grade. Let's look that verse up. In this way, all who prophesy will have a turn to speak one after the other so that everyone will learn and be encouraged. Remember that people who prophesy are in control of their spirit and can take turns for God is not a God of disorder, but of peace. As in all the meetings of God's holy people, women should be silent during the church meetings. It is not proper for them to speak. They should be submissive, just as the law says. If they have questions, they should ask their husbands at home, for it is improper for women to speak in church meetings. I, I'm not sure what it says in all churches. What translation is that? I'm out of the let's let's go to ES. Let's go to the let's go to the elect standard version. The women should keep silent in the church. Oh, as in all the churches of the for saints. For God is not the God of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints, comma, right? Mm -hmm. Am I tripping? No. This, that, that's, that's, that's a comma. It is a comma. Let's go to, let's look at it in the parallel of the NIV. I could go back to the NLT. I think that's that comma's there. I think that's an important comma. I don't think Paul is literally saying women cannot speak in a church. I Maybe I'm tripping, but I don't think that's what that's what that's saying. So there's a comma there. For God there's is not the God of there. confusion of peace, as in all the churches of the saints, comma, the women should keep silent in the churches. Right? Are you, so you're saying that, that that is prescription for all churches everywhere? I think that's what he was saying. For God is not the God of disorder, but of peace, as in all the congregations of the Lord's people. That has a period. That's interesting. Women should remain silent in the churches. They are not allowed to speak, but must be in submission, as the law says. Yeah, I don't know if that is, I mean, I don't know your thoughts. I don't know if that's a prescription for all churches everywhere throughout all time. I, that's not how I'm reading it. Am I <laughs> No, am no, I no. Tripping? and it says period. Right, so the, yeah, the NIV says period. They are, oh, but the ESV had a comma. Has a comma. So let's check out the New King James. Let's look at it in all the translation. We could even go to the Greek. Again, all I'm saying is I don't think that and and okay, and let's just let's just flesh this out to its logical conclusion. So the conclusion of this verse is that women are not allowed to speak. What do you mean by that? Is your wife not allowed to to ask you to hand the bulletin to them? Like, what do you? <laughs> Got to be silent. What are we saying? Are you are we literally saying that women are to be silent in church throughout the whole experience? Are we saying that they can't teach children's ministry? Are they we saying lead. they can't do announcements? Well, okay, they can lead worship. Mm. But they bet not say anything in between the songs to transition and usher in a spirit. They better not tell anyone to lift their hands during oh, worship. Oh, because songs aren't speaking; it's singing. Yeah, got it. Is that what is that is that what we're really saying? It's I'm crazy. I'm I'm so confused. Okay, because again, I don't know. I don't. I, I that's like a hard complementarian position. KJV says, as in all the churches of the saints. So this, I think, it's my opinion. For God is not the author of confusion, but of peace, as in all the churches of the saints. Period. So he's mm -hmm. talking about God is not a confusion in all the right. churches in the saints. Let your women keep silent in the churches, for they are not permitted to speak, but they are to be submissive, as the law says. I think this is talking about the women in that church because we see other passages where women are speaking and, and they, they are, are leading. Dividing the church. And too. yeah. And so I think this is about a specific situation with specific women. That's how I interpret it and read it. I don't know anyone that views this in the literal sense because again, we'll flesh this out to its logical conclusion. What are we saying? Are we saying women can't do anything? They can't lead. They can't. Uh, they can't pray. They can't oh, lead worship. Brittany. What is Brittany saying? Brittany saying it was for one church. It was for one church. <laughs> That's how I've always read it. That's how I've always read it. Now that doesn't mean that I ignore the verse in First Timothy three. This is where me and you may differ. Where I would say the verse in First Timothy three says, "Cannot teach and hold an authority." I would say, "Teach and hold an authority" is one usurp mm -hmm. authority. That is one thing. It's not. They can't teach or hold authority. Yeah, it's yeah. one. That's how same. I would. Yeah, yeah at the yeah. same time. That's how I would view that verse. So I'm not like trying to remove verses. Brandon Snipe says, God is not the God of confusion. So women, don't be a distraction to this specific church here. I mean, 
that's kind of how I've always read it. Yeah, same. Ah, I don't know. I don't again, and I'm just trying to be logically consistent. If that is what Paul is saying, that is a really radical conclusion that seems to contradict other scriptures. Hey, this is a segment from our daily after party stream. Consider partnering with us online for as little as $5 a month to get access to these daily after party streams completely unedited. You'll also get access to our podcast as they are streamed live into the community before anyone else gets to see them, get to interact with our guests, get access to our private Discord server, and a discount code for our store for as little as $5 a month. Ultimately, that will help towards helping us continue contextualizing the gospel using media and podcast here on YouTube. All right, I'll see you over there. Peace.